Hello, and hope everyone's having a great day today. We're here today to talk a little bit about artificial intelligence, AI, technology, and how it really benefits law firms, the challenges that you might be going through, what firms are using, how firms can benefit from things like AI and the tools. So I'm here with Bim Dave from Helm 360, and I'd like to take a minute or two so that Bim can do an introduction and talk about his background. Bim? Thank you, Sue. Great to be here to talk about AI, um, especially in this particular climate. So my name is Bim, as, as you mentioned. I've been with Helm360 for about three and a half years, um, but I've been really serving the legal industry for about 20 years now. Uh, my journey started out at Thomson Reuters, uh, where I was responsible for a lot of the implementations of their ERP solution, which is Elite 3E, um, and helping customers globally to implement that solution, customize it, convert data into it, all of the fun stuff associated with uh, going live on a, on a new ERP solution for law firms. Thank you, Bim. Um, and just to give you a little bit of background about, you know, how I got to work with Bim and Helm 360, I've joined them recently as the director of sales. And Bim and I have worked together for many years. Um, and just kind of like Bim mentioned, we've been in the legal sector for quite some time. We started with, you know, Elite 3, with the enterprise world, with the Windows. We go back to Informix. That's a little bit about our background. Really excited to be here together and talk about how the benefit of AI will enhance technology in law firms. So, Bim, where do you see AI going? How do you see it really, truly benefiting? Because, you know, we hear a lot of buzz, especially this year with COVID and the pandemic, that, you know, firms are really having challenges. They're working remotely. Firms are trying to decide, you know, do they invest in technology and which technology is truly the best technology going forward? You know, is a tool like AI going to benefit them? And if it is, where do you see that being leveraged in the law firm sector? Yeah, great, great question. So, AI in every sense these days is kind of baked into pretty much everything we do, right? So whether you're picking up your mobile phone um, or you're on your computer in, in, in any kind of Windows or Apple Mac software, there is probably some element of AI that's kind of processing some kind of information in the background um, to enable companies to dive into the data that they're kind of rendering as part of the, the user experience to enable them to be more efficient. And I think with uh, law firms, it's no different. Um, there are so many different ways that AI can benefit a law firm. Um, really, it's about how you implement it um, and, and making sure that it's relevant to the problem that you're trying to solve, right? Because ultimately, there is a danger with any kind of, any kind of new technology solution or any, any technology solution, to be honest, um, that kind of takes you on a journey where you're you're implementing technology for the sake of implementing technology. And really what it comes down to is whether it's AI or any other kind of technology that comes up in future or any existing technology that's out there, it's really about focusing on what the problem is that you're trying to solve with the solution and then defining a way of implementing that solution so that it, so that it solves that problem. Now, what's great about the AI space at the moment is that it's become a lot more accessible than it has done in previous years. There's big uh, vendors out there like Microsoft and Amazon that have invested in building frameworks that allow application developers and vendors um, like ourselves to be able to leverage certain elements of those stacks to build very uh, robust solutions in very short amounts of time, which solve some of these customer problems. And that's everything from, you know, using machine learning algorithms and frameworks to natural language processing and using those to deliver an, an, a more enhanced experience. Um, and just like one, one quick stat, I remember reading an article from Gartner, which basically said that by the end of 2024, um, probably around 75% of enterprises will basically shift from this mode of really piloting AI and moving it to a more operational um, AI, so really actually implementing the technology for real. And that kind of rings true with a lot of the conversations that we have with law firms in that there's many firms trialing technology, right, to see what it can do for them. Um, and really what this that shows us is that as we start to uncover the benefits of AI and how to implement it in the most effective way, um, ultimately we'll get to a point where, where from an operational perspective, we're actually seeing the benefit of that over, over years to come. It's a very exciting time um, and, and great to be talking about AI and, and how relevant it can be in, in the legal industry. 
But we also hear that, you know, law firms take time to adopt to new technology and they're cautious on what they want to implement. And, you know, I remember when I worked at a firm, once they make a decision, they're excited about that. But yet there's some challenges with senior partners that don't want to adapt to that new technology. Um, And if you take a look at maybe the medical industry, AI really took off in that industry. But from a law firm perspective, from an implementation perspective, how do you see that, you know, senior partners in those law firms will really benefit from an AI tool? Is it going to really focus in the finance perspective? Is it going to really help the IT technology perspective? Is it going to help the administrative perspective or the rainmakers of the law firm? It's really the future of, I think, the businesses and organizations. But how do you see that going into a law firm practice day to day? Is it going to replace individuals or is it going to enhance those individuals' needs? Ultimately, it it kind of falls into a few different areas, right? So firstly, to answer answer part of your question, I think this, this is applicable to every role within a law firm, to be honest with you. I don't think the technology should be limited or um, will be limited to certain individuals or certain roles within a law firm. I think fundamentally, if implemented correctly and implemented right, um, it can enhance the day-to-day experience and the productivity of of any person within a law law firm, whether that's your managing partner all the way um, through to, you know, even the the receptionist on on the front desk, right? Like there's, there's different ways that this technology can be implemented to enhance all of those kind of profiles of, of, of employee. What it really comes down to is, is what's available and, and, and again, um, how it's implemented, right? So I think you touched on a very important point here, and that is that there is some, some resistance, um, reluctance to kind of embrace technology as being the silver bullet, right, as solving our problem. And part of that is not necessarily down to the technology, but it's about how you actually go about implementing the technology. A lot of the success stories that we see are where you have true uh, stakeholder input throughout the life cycle of the implementation. And and ultimately, you, you're actually solving the problem by listening to the people that are living the problem, right, and building a solution around that or implementing a solution around that. And I think that's where a lot of projects get sidetracked, to be honest with you, because really what ends up happening is you're, you're implementing the technology, thinking that it's going to solve all of your problems without actually going back to the root and really getting the people involved from an engagement perspective um, early on in the project. And that's that's really a fundamental key success parameter of any of any of the projects that, that we run is that we need to have the right people at the table in order to be able to implement um, this kind of technology. Where we see AI being um, successful and, and deployed uh, within the legal industry today, it's everything from legal research to um, document creation, so building uh, draft contracts automatically for you, uh, contract review where you can kind of train um, the AI algorithms to go and look at the contract, look, look at you know hundreds of pages through, through contracts in a matter of seconds um, and really understand the risk profile of that contract, areas for due diligence that need to be checked, all of those kind of things, right? And really it's about speed, um, accuracy um, and, and timing to go, go and apply those solutions to those kind of environments. And, and that's really the big benefit, right? Like you can take what a person does and really scale them out, right? Using this technology in my mind, um, it's not about necessarily replacing um, the, the human because I, I don't think you can ever get to a point where you can really, really do that. Um, what you can do is you can enhance everybody's ability to be able to do their job function in a more effective way. And that's, that's really the way that it should be looked at from a technology standpoint. It's about embracing it and using it to do more, more efficiently, and allow you to focus more time on the things that can't be done by the technology, like relationship building, talking to your clients, building new client base, um, the, the people element that's, that's really important, right? So what I'm hearing you say is that this AI tool is going to be an assistant. It's going to really drive maybe the law firm's business processes, learn what your business process is, and be your assistant no matter where you are. So like today, when firms are remotely working, you can have this AI tool that can remember and do everything that you need it to do. It's going to learn if I'm an attorney, 
what my scenarios are or what my legal requirements are for that specific case. Or if I'm a controller, it's going to know what reports I need to run. Or if I'm a paralegal, it's going to learn to know what rules I need to find. Um, so that's pretty powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think the way, the way I look at it is it, it's really embedding AI into your day-to-day productivity is really the key. It's really about proactive intelligence. So understanding the context of the work that you're doing at that moment in time and then having the AI component, the AI technology kind of step in and make suggestions, um, p- perform actions, um, you know, do do what it needs to do to enable you to then accelerate delivery of whatever that item is. And I think that's that's the key thing. And, and if you think about a simple example where, you know, we, we live in email these days, right? We live in, in our Outlook um, system. We're bombarded with um, requests for information and um, follow-up questions and answers to questions that we need to we need to get out the door quickly and really serve our clients in in the most meaningful way. And what we're talking about here is really having technology that can kind of sit alongside your existing productivity suite, like Outlook, as as an example, and use the information that's coming in in terms of those requests from a potential customer to then fill in the gaps automatically. Going back to a specific example, um, if you look at uh, Termi, which is our AI solution from Helm three hundred and sixty. What that does is it embeds itself into your Outlook experience, right? So you can imagine like a little uh, a bar on the side, which basically is where Termi lives. Now, the beauty of it is, is I could could be having an email conversation with Yusu um, and not know anything about you. It could be the first time that you're, you're sending a message to me. But ultimately, it's able to then go and understand that this is a new email coming in from somebody. It's going to go and do automatic lookups to all of the key services within the law firm. So if if another lawyer has worked with that particular customer before um, in maybe a different practice area, you can connect the dots in terms of the relationship. You can go and pull information from the CRM perspective. Um, You can go and get financial information, you know, all, all of the key stats that you need in relation to to me, you know, building that relationship with you to enable me to, you know, give you a better service, right? Ultimately, big, give you a better service and make you feel like like we know you as a firm, right? As in just build, building on that that whole customer experience. 